Hey, y'all, I'm Shane Sams, the host of the Membership Masters podcast. I'm a self-employed, location-independent, online entrepreneur, and I make my entire living online with membership sites. And I'm here to help you build online businesses, build memberships that can give a great living and a great future for your family, too. And I am pumped today by having an amazing guest on the show. Her name is Amy Porterfield. Amy Porterfield is one of the best podcasters and the best entrepreneurs anywhere online. She has built an incredible business that generates millions and millions and millions of dollars every single year. And part of her strategy, of course, is the membership model in her Momentum membership. We cover a lot of ground in today's podcast with Amy Porterfield. We kick off with talking about her recent move to Nashville, Tennessee, why she did it, and why she is excited to be in Nashville with her family. We're going to talk a little bit about her new podcast. It's called the Talking Body Podcast. Amy just launched that a couple weeks ago back in January of 2021. So I'm going to ask her some questions about her new show. And then we go deep on strategy. We're going to talk about why Amy added the Momentum membership to everything else that she's doing online and how she grew that community into a million dollar membership in 2020 during a global pandemic she was able to launch build and grow this incredible membership site we're going to talk about the importance of list building and how you can grow your list and how you can use webinars to grow a membership site of your own we talk about facebook ads that's one of the things that amy is best known for is her use of facebook to grow her business and in this changing landscape where facebook is changing they're deleting accounts and they're our ad game is changing and Apple is passing new rules that are going to affect Facebook ads. You're really going to want to pay close attention when we're talking about those Facebook ads. And finally, we go deep on the subject of overcoming self-doubt. Self-doubt is one of the biggest things, though, that mindset issue that creeps into our head, that imposter syndrome, that thing that makes you doubt you can start, makes you doubt you can build, makes you doubt you can launch, makes you doubt you can grow. We're going to talk about how Amy overcame self-doubt after she stopped working for Tony Robbins, built her own online business, and how when self-doubt creeps back in to her business, she beats it quickly and she gets unstuck and she gets moving forward. And I know you're going to be able to use those tips to help you move forward as well. I had an amazing time talking to Amy Porterfield today, and I know you're going to learn a lot about business from this amazing person. But before we get started, I got one question for you. Are you ready to become a membership master today? All right, let's go. Welcome to the Membership Masters podcast brought to you by membershipmasters.com. This is the podcast where we teach you how to get and keep more members every single month. I've helped thousands of people start, build, and grow memberships, and I interview some of the biggest membership owners anywhere online. My goal is to help you build a million-dollar membership of your own. Brick by brick, let's do it together. Come on. Three, two, one. Hi, Amy Porterfield. Well, hey there, Shane Sands. Nice to see you. I am pumped to see you on my camera because we got it all figured out a minute ago. We we're trying to, you're, you're in a new house, new location. And sometimes there's real life happening behind the scenes on these <laughs> podcasts, right? Oh my goodness. Real life at its best. I was scrambling to find a place to do this video in this new Nashville home. Nothing is set up as I want it yet, but we'll get there. We'll get there. We will get there. Tell, tell, tell me a little bit about the move to Nashville before we go into all the business stuff, because I, I got a buddy named Grant Baldwin yes. and I've, I've known him for like eight years or I don't even know how long I've known him and he's every word out of his mouth is when you move into Nashville when you move into Nashville and like that's a common theme I find uh, with the people in Nashville so what got, what got you guys to move across the country and become a southern girl what happened there right okay so born and raised southern California I even went to college at UC Santa Barbara so I have never been far from where I grew up and my husband, though, he's from Pennsylvania, came to San Diego for the military. And so he's been there for a long time, but he's a country boy at heart. And so he started to say, let's move to Tennessee. We took a vacation here one time and he absolutely loved it. And I'm very close to Michael Hyatt and his family. And so we started talking to them more and more. And then the pandemic hit. And last year, even though Hobie's been asking me for years and years and years, let's move to Nashville, let's move to Nashville. I looked at him and I said, I'm ready. I'm ready for a change. I want to shake things up. 
um, my perspective on what matters most got really clear during this pandemic. And so we did it. That's absolutely amazing. Now, listen, if you need any help, like I'm, I'm from Southeast Kentucky, born and raised and remain today. So if you have any trouble with your Southern translations, if they use any funny words at the restaurants or you just need a little practice saying y'all, you just yes. give me a call. I'll take okay. care of you. Okay? I will well, for good. sure. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, now, with the move, with everything else, I love I love talking to entrepreneurs because we think we can <laughs> we think we can do so much. And right in the middle of moving across the entire United States towards hopefully the end of a global pandemic, right. like not only are you running all of the amazing things that we're going to talk about today, but you just launched a new podcast like a I week did. or two ago, right? Tell me tell me about that. Yeah. So long story short, Rachel Hollis and I are good friends, and we went on a girls' trip, and we had this conversation around what would it look like if women entrepreneurs or just women in general uh, accepted how they looked, accepted their body fully, no matter what. So we started having this conversation about how my insecurities work into me building this business that I've been building for the last 11 mm -hmm. years. And so we had this great conversation and she's like, that's a podcast. And so she approached me la late last year and said, I've got this new production company called 3% Chance. We're putting other people's podcasts on our uh, platform, do you want to create a limited si limited time podcast series all about body acceptance, body positivity? And I said, I do. So it's 12 episodes, limited time, and I'm vulnerable and honest, and I kind of want to hide, un hide under my desk. It's not a topic I typically talk about, but I think it's important for women to really show up in a big way, and that's what it's all about. So yeah, we, la we launched a new podcast. That's amazing. That's absolutely, it's like, I'm moving across the country. I got 17 <laughs> things going on. Let's plan the year. And you know what? <laughs> Just, just for giggles, let's launch a new <laughs> podcast. That'll be fun. You, you sound like my husband who's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> well, yeah. I, my, my wife is my business partner, Jocelyn. She couldn't be here today, but my wife uh, uh, is my business partner. And I think there's at least once a week, we look at each other and say, <laughs> what are we doing? Like, why? Why are we doing that? I, uh, it was so funny. I went to Florida this week. Um, we had this amazing opportunity to become an education partner with this live event company. So we mm -hmm. flew down there. We had like two days of these eight hour meetings. And, you know, I talk all the time because I'm recording two podcasts and all this stuff. I woke up this morning and lost my voice. I was like, <gasps> oh, no, I got to talk to Amy today. I got to talk to these other people today. And I, my, my team was like, get the honey, get the tea, yes. like, you know, but guys, we think like, oh, I'll just jump on a plane, fly to Florida, fly home, do four <laughs> podcasts the next day. It'll all be good. And I had to go get my daughter at cheerleading practice last night. And like oh, so I flew yes. in, landed, drove 30 minutes to the next town, waited till 930, got home. <laughs> oh, that's what we do. That's what we do. This is the entrepreneurial life. You're living it right. All right. Well, you are definitely doing the entrepreneur and the business world right. Because you, I've always been an admirer of yours, always been amazed by all the cool things that you do. And I was really excited when I heard about this momentum membership, because memberships are that's, that's what we talk about here. It's what we talk about over at Flip Lifestyle, because we just love how the membership model works in an entrepreneurial space. We love how accessible it is for new entrepreneurs to be out and go out and build a membership, get 100 people, pay them 50 bucks a month, you know, and start building a business. And I know you are known for courses and known for Facebook ads, but tell me about Momentum membership and where that fits in to the Amy empire. I absolutely love our Momentum membership. So here's how it works. We have a customer journey product line inside the business. We have three products. The first one is how to get started with list building, starting from scratch, because it's the best way to get into building an online business. You need an audience, you need a list. So that's where everybody typically starts after. Usually they come through the funnel through my podcast, Online Marketing Made Easy. Then they get into List Builder Society. And then once they start growing their email list is when they're curious about how to create a digital course, which is my signature program, which is called Digital Course Academy. So if you go through Digital Course Academy, it's 12 weeks with me, everything you need to know to create a course and launch it. After Digital Course Academy, you get an exclusive invite into Momentum membership. It's $97 a month, and you can only get into it if you've already gone through Digital Course Academy. So we call it, of course, a back-end membership. And the reason I created it is I knew that 12 weeks wasn't enough in order to create your course, launch it, and then launch it again and launch it again. Because my motto is you create one course, you launch it over and over and over again, you can be insanely profitable. I wanted to stay in the trenches with them. I wanted to continue to train them, continue to troubleshoot with them. I wanted them to be a part of my world as much as I was a part of theirs. So that is why we created the Momentum Membership. 
Yeah. And how do you like in the, like, do you, is there content in, so sometimes back end memberships don't have a lot of content. It is more right. accountability access. Like that's what they exist for. Like you've got this big front end and then all of a sudden you know that there's always the overachievers, man, those overachievers, they come in eight weeks instead of 12, they're killing courses, right? <laughs> you know, you've got, you've got your 10% overachievers, you know, yeah. but then but most people, it does take a little bit more time than maybe, even if you make your program last longer. So like what's in momentum membership, is it community hangouts? Is it Q and A is it? Are, is there content in there? What's in there? Great question. So we always say it's community accountability and training. So here's what we do: we have four weeks of of something that you get inside of Momentum. The first week is always a live training from me with a Q and A on the back end. Now, here's what's important about this, and we learned this the hard way. We really had to, it's been in existence for over a year now, so we've done a lot of trial and error. And what we do is we do not give give you brand new content that you're going to be overwhelmed with as you're going through my signature program, Digital Course Academy. What we do is we take something from DCA and we build on it. We uh, dive deeper into it. We add context around it in a bigger way to help people get great success. So we take something that already exists and we build off of that versus grabbing something from out of nowhere and teaching that because it will be very overwhelming for people. Yeah. So the first week is a new brand new training from me. The second week we do a behind the scenes video from me or somebody on my team of how we do business. The third week they get a template that I use in my business, plug and play type template. We're a very systems and process oriented business. So they're coveted by our audience. And then the fourth week is another live Q and a from me. So every week they are getting something new. That's amazing. Like, so you just, so it'd be like, I'm just using a, a random example. Like if you were in theory, like teaching someone how to build a sales funnel, then mm -hmm. in theory, th the main course can show you the sales funnel, but maybe this back end membership goes deeper. Like let's really break down each sales page and go exactly. down that rabbit hole. So you can really make it like you might make your first sales page, but something like this would let you really make it correct. Like get it to grow and get it to actually convert something like that. So right? true. That's exactly what we do. And then we also, sometimes this is really popular in the group where I'm always evolving. I only teach what I know. And so this last round of launching that I did for my program, I added three new strategies to my webinar that I don't teach in digital course academy so my momentum members got the three new strategies and i showed them where it fit into their existing webinars they already learned from me so now it's kind of extra special and something that worked for me that could work for them do, do you let your you know like one of the uh, things that we have always found is you know people come for content but they even come for the expert like people are they like shane and jocelyn they like amy porterfield but then all of a sudden they're like wait a minute there's other cool people following yes. these people and they're like us and they yes. start actually liking them more than you, right? Like, yes. is, there a, is there a community aspect to this thing or what? Huge community aspect. I'm glad you brought that up. So one of our biggest drivers for this momentum membership is we've got to have tons of engagement, lots of community, and we encourage each other, each of the members to help each other. And so we are constantly doing challenges and contests and special, uh, special experiences in the membership to get that community to really grow and foster. And so, yes, we do have a big community presence. And number two, we have a big accountability presence. So mm -hmm. we do accountability pods where we encourage everybody to get into a pod. We walk them through exactly how to get through them. If they're struggling, finding one will help them. But we have noticed that anybody who's in an accountability pod with three or four people, they tend to stay in the membership a whole lot longer because they don't want to lose that special aspect. And they know if they didn't stay in momentum, they wouldn't be able to speak the same language as those in their pod. So the accountability pods are incredibly important part of the membership. Yeah, that's the biggest mistake that we see when people uh, get a membership launched is they're so focused on content or so focused on I'm the show and they don't realize like, no, 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 you're the star but stars shine their light on other people and yes. you've got to shine your light on your community and each other. That's what will actually make them stay. We had a live event <laughs> two years ago and I remember, you know, it was the Shane and Jocelyn show. We had a hundred people in our community that came to Nashville and, and uh, we had this working dinner is what we called it at the end of the first day. So we were on stage all day, me and Jocelyn, Jocelyn got all dolled up looking like Dolly Parton up there presenting. Right. You know, <laughs> and we, and we came down and I, I remember walking in the back of the room and I thought, okay, well, we're going in to help these people. We're going to go table to table and talk 
talk and be like the preacher and the preacher's wife running around this place, you know? And like, I thought, oh, everybody's going to come and run over, right? Because Shane and Jocelyn walked in <laughs> and I stood back there for 20 minutes and nobody knew I was there because oh, they were, my they, goodness. they were having so much fun with each other. And I just thought, well, this is what it's all about right here. That's, that's, that's how you, that's what your community should look like if you get them all together. And then eventually people started hanging out with us a little bit, but I was like, you know what? Hang out with your friends. Yeah, that's what's going to keep you successful. You know? I love that you're so humble and gracious to know, like, that's how it's supposed to be. That's when you know right. you've done a good job because a lot of people will get in their head and think, wait a second, I'm the star here. What am I doing wrong that you all aren't running over to talk to me? But you saw it as if for exactly what it is, like, that's a great community. I do love that. And you just made me think of something. One of the things we do in my training, so that first week I always do a live training we try to always include stories and successes and strategies that our students in momentum are using. So mm -hmm. when I teach something new, I'll say, let me show you how Jamie has done this. She's one of your momentum members. So they're always remembering that this is about them and people are actually getting results in the membership. And then we also do a debrief post. Anybody who's done a live launch, which is what I'm all about. Anyone who's done a live launch, they'll do a full debrief for the whole uh, membership. Those tend to be the most popular posts, not posts mm -hmm. that I did. That's right. That's right. Not, not Amy's here. It's yes. look what that person did. I can be that person too. Like I can yeah. totally do that. Right. Exactly. What tool do you guys use to, for your community? Do you guys just, you have you built your own backend where the community exists or using like a app or Facebook we, or what are you? So doing? we use Searchy for our actual platform for the membership. And then we still use a Facebook group for our community. And here's awesome. why we've done so much research and I would love not to use Facebook for our community. But one thing we've noticed is people are still on Facebook on a pretty regular basis, at least my audience is. And so we're grabbing them when they're scrolling or checking things out. Whereas if they had to log into the other community, we noticed through our research that people weren't logging in and actually forming that communication. But if you have a different way, I'd love to hear your way if you're not using Facebook groups, if it's working for you. Okay. So we started memberships back in like 2013, right? And we, the community was really important to us coming out of the gate, but I went old school forum because I had a mentor that was like, use a forum. Everybody knows how to use a forum and, and you get to keep all the content. You control what you yeah. keep because the problem with Facebook, especially with what's going on in the world right now is Facebook can turn you off and they don't care. For right? sure. So if you build your entire paid membership community on Facebook, uh oh, it could go it's away. Dangerous. Uh, yes. It's dangerous. Yes. And like, so what we have done, we just moved over to Kajabi um, because we recommend people use Kajabi. So, like you, I just, I'm not going to recommend something unless I'm actually on it and I'm right. walking the walk. Right. And they have a forum system set up in there that kind of works like a newsfeed. And we have broken the membership kind of into two parts where the community fun, FOMO, share pictures of your dogs, have a, what Facebook is intended to be used for to get to know your community, get to know me and Jocelyn, all those things. We let that live on Facebook because okay. I don't have to teach a new habit. You've already got Facebook. Yeah. Right? If someone quits the membership, we actually will leave them in that Facebook group because okay. in our, in our community in uh, side of Kajabi, that's where you can come get accountability. That's where you can come get support, the more business side of things. And then we have community managers in there that people work. So that way I'm, I've kind of hedged my bets and I'm playing both sides. I, if Facebook were to just randomly shut my group down or the algorithm triggers or whatever, I don't care. I've still got everybody in my system. We're still doing the deep work in the community in there. We do have fun things in there. Like that's the only way to access community calls. Like the two Q and A's I do a month. Cool. You got to go inside of Kajabi to do that. Yeah. But Facebook is like, don't forget the member call. It's more like announcements and, and, that's and stuff. great. Yeah. I love Kajabi. We use Kajabi for all of my digital courses. And so mm -hmm. That's something that I, I might look into. I knew they had a good community uh, feature there. So good to it's know. It's not you're good for building it. community. That's the problem. It's good for, it's good for, I guess, uh, not customer service even. It's good for support. Got it's, it. It's good for come in. You got a question today about building a membership site. I'm stuck. I can't figure this out. I don't know how to do this. We get, we get to keep all that. We get to prepare all that. We can create macros for that so that that process of serving them becomes like, we want to serve everybody within 24 hours inside the community. Right. So like, that's good there, but the, you know, Oh, my kid graduated high school or well, let's celebrate treasure's success. Cause she launched her membership and got 33 members. Like that's way more uh, fun on Facebook. 
yeah. um, than it is inside the community. So Good point. It, it's, you're kind of darned if you do and darned if you don't, you got to pick your poison. But I always, I don't want to trust Mark Zuckerberg with my family's future. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. So tell me about how you, it's amazing. I'm always a front end membership person and, and it's amazing to hear people off the back end creating community because people are probably so invested in your courses that they just jump right into this membership to hang out with more people who are invested in your courses. So you guys rely a lot on advertising, correct? To push people into your big courses. And then does the, just a funnel take care of them for momentum or do you follow up? Like, how do you great start? Question. How do you start the funnel basically? Yeah. Great question. And, and I'll share a misstep I made along the way that we've since corrected. So we rely heavily on organic traffic, our email list and paid Facebook ads, Instagram too, but Facebook is where it's at for us in terms of getting people into our courses. So list builder society, my, the top of the funnel course is evergreen. So we use Facebook ads every single day to generate revenue with that course. And then digital course Academy, we we launch once or twice a year live and we've used affiliates in the past this year, we've decided not to use affiliates and kind of experiment in a different way internally. And so we heavily use Facebook ads to fill the funnel. And when I say Facebook ads, we're getting people into a webinar. So I firmly believe the best way to sell a digital course is with webinars. And some people will be like, aren't webinars old news? Not at all. I have story after story after story of my students using webinars to sell anything from how to make beautiful cupcakes all the way to how to get your kid to sleep at night. So, I mean, yes, webinars definitely sell digital courses. And then from there, to answer your question, we do uh, at the end when people graduate from DCA, because here's what's interesting about DCA. I am there multiple times a week doing Q&A for 12 weeks. So I am very much on the journey with them. When DCA is in session, I am in session with them. So what happens is 12 weeks, now we do a graduation. We make it a really big, exciting, big deal. We give away awards. And then from there, I do a live summit. In this case, it's virtual because the world has changed. I do a live summit. Everybody's invited. And I sell momentum from stage at this live Uh. summit. And then I do an email marketing campaign afterwards. And it's to anybody who's just graduating DCA or their alumni and they're not in momentum. They've been marketed, but they haven't joined. So now they'll be part of that. So that will happen twice a year, meaning you can't get into momentum right now. If you're a DCA Mm -hmm. member, you can't just say, well, now I want to do momentum. We launch it twice a year and maybe some pop-up launches, but they're rare and far between. That's amazing. Like that's, that's a, that's a good, I I always laugh because I I have a philosophy. I say pioneers get arrows in their back. Like, like, like I see all these every month, every week, there's a new app, a new tool, but we're the same way. It's like, or it's like do a podcast for organic traffic, get people on your email list, invite them to a webinar and ask them to buy your stuff. Like this Amen. doesn't change guys. Like uh, the other things are just salt and pepper, like this clubhouse yes. thing that's taken over everybody's life. Right. Like cl- I've been on clubhouse a few times. Every time I look up, I'm on there three hours. and I'm like, I could have sent like five emails, done a webinar and started a Facebook ad. And I'm like, I got Ugh. nothing out of this. Like, what are we doing people? Killing right? me. I know. Right. So I think I just, I'm so glad to have confirmation from you that, you know what? Email and webinar still work. People, they still that work. I mean, I'm talking multi-million dollar business still work. And that's yeah. just not me. My students have done incredibly well with that model as well. But I promise to tell you one of the mistakes we made along the way. And when we had momentum, the first year of momentum, it was um, $297 a month. Now, Usually a back end membership is pricier in, in many situations. The front end might be 47, 57, 97. But what I learned is that the back end tends to be pricier. And so we went out with 397 a month and I have a big audience. So the numbers were good. It became a million dollar membership. However, I have a lot of people in Digital Course Academy that didn't take me up on it. So when I looked at the conversion, I thought something's off here. And then COVID hit and something was really off. $297 a month is a lot for somebody who hasn't yet launched their course. Yes. 
And so that's where I miss the mark because I'm inviting people into momentum and they're like, yeah, $297 a month would be great when I'm making six figures with my course. I'm making zero. I'm still in the trenches. And momentum was promised to be on this journey with you, get you to the finish line and get your course launched, but they're not making money. So when I took it down to $97, it was like, boom, the sweet spot. And yeah. that's something they can't afford and don't have to worry about it every single month. So I definitely, I screwed up with the price point in the first time out. Yeah. Especially, you know, we have found, cause that's our, that's kind of our tagline is, you know, Joss and I, we were school teachers when we started online business. I mean, I was yard selling stuff just to buy an email marketing course here and there. Right. Oh and God, doing that, I, I sold story. everything, but sold it. I sold everything and I almost started renting my kids on the weekend. I mean, that's what I was looking <laughs> to figure out how to learn this stuff, you know? And um, it's funny because when we, it actually was really good when we started helping people start memberships. Um, that's why our tagline became all you need is a hundred people to pay you $50 a month and you can make 60 grand a year. Like we entrepreneurs get caught up sometimes in big numbers, but dude, 200 people paying somebody $50 a month is a six figure <laughs> income, right? That is and incredible. like these lower. Like, think about that. Right. And like yeah. a, a thousand people paying you 83 is a million. I and mean, this doesn't the math just goes wide. It goes crazy fast. You know, I didn't, and wow. the problem is we all we're all conditioned for 90 million dollar products and charge what you're worth and vanity pricing. And that's good. Value should be there. But if you do a membership, you can really help a lot of people and they'll pay you for 10, 12, maybe forever. I got people still paying me since 2014 when we launched. Wow right? So these lower ticket memberships are entry points. They get in even on the back end of a product, you make the back end, people succeed and now they pay you forever. And you've got all of a sudden you raise the floor of your business higher than everyone else's ceiling as these memberships start stacking up. And that creates all this other crazy opportunity. And when the world opens up, you invite people to live events again and you know, yes. all those things. So I, I love that you said that. I'm so glad that you confirmed that to people out there who are like struggling because oh, yeah. somebody's telling them to charge $5,000 a month. Like, no guys, just get a thousand people to pay you $50 a month and you'll be looking around at everybody else like they're crazy. When we're, we're <laughs> so going to work. true. Right? Yeah. <laughs> tell, me, tell me about the affiliates. I'd love to go down that just path for a second. Like okay. why, why I, I know you've always been a big affiliate marketer and, and relationships are so important. We do affiliate marketing for our friends and people like that. And they do stuff for us. But why the, why the, why the step back from that? And let's try something new. Was it just time and energy on the team and commitment? Or was it, Hey, you know, we want to go all in on another rabbit hole or was there a negative experience? Like what made you leave that behind? Great question. So for those of you who don't know me, you're exactly right. I've done affiliate marketing since the first day I started this business 11 years ago. And I have been an, the top, one of the top affiliates for Marie Forleo for over 10 years. So I have promoted her program with huge success. And then many people have promoted my programs as well. Well. So affiliate marketing has brought in millions and millions of dollars to my business. And so when we launched Digital Course Academy, we started using affiliates and we've had hundreds of affiliates who have been amazing and brought great traffic and great people into my world. But you hit your, you hit it on the head when you said affiliates are a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of focus. And although I had one dedicated person on my team, who's incredible that managed the affiliate relationships, what I found is that I was taking my eye off the launch in order to make sure these affiliates that I cared deeply about were supported and had what they needed. And many of them wanted videos from me and me to be live on their podcast. And then who do I choose? Yes. And who do I choose? No. And there's, it started to stress me out, to be quite honest. Now I'm a big believer in you, you choose your thoughts and your thoughts, create feelings, feelings, create actions. And so I could choose different thoughts and not be stressed out about this. I get that. However, I thought I also want a simpler business business. So we're doing an experiment into 2021 this year um, to go to a four day work week. Now I have 20 full-time employees. So that is a very big feat to go to four day work week when I work a lot of nights and a lot of weekends, but my husband, my sweet, sweet husband, he would really love some extra time with me. And he's been so patient as I built this business. And so I committed when I moved to Tennessee, I was going to take most evenings and weekends off, but take it a little further and go half day and then full day off on Fridays. And I'm the kind of person that I don't want to just do it without my team benefiting as well. I never want to feel like I have a corporate business. So I want my teams to be able to take Friday off as well. So my point being, 
is in order for us to do more or excuse me, do less, I'm learning, do less, but still make a bigger impact in the business, still make great revenue and more so than we ever have before. We have to change the projects that we're working on and taking Mm. affiliates out of the mix gives us time to focus on what we do best, which is sell List Builder Society, Digital Course Academy, and Momentum. So I am not being an affiliate for anybody this year, and I'm not asking anybody to be an affiliate for me this year because my goal is to show that you can do less in your business and still make a great income and enjoy your life. Now, I'm going to stumble along the way, but I hope to one day be on stage talking about how you can do this, but I have to go first. So that's why we stop using affiliates that's just a, for one year. It's a awesome. one-year experiment. That's what I, I, lo- I love what you said there too, because, you know, as leaders of teams and, and the, I think the entrepreneur culture says, well, I want to live the four hour work week as long as, you know, but that requires me to delegate everybody else to work a 70 hour week. Right? right. And when we started hiring people two years ago, I started looking like, you know, cause flip lifestyle is all about like, you know, we, it's, it's basically the world puts work first. We put family first. That's what the whole concept of our brand is. And that's what we do every you know week. I have, I have capped hours that I want to work. I got to make sure that I'm picking my kids up at the school bus. I'm taking them to practice, all those things. But when we started hiring people, I was like, oh, dang, man, we're going to hire two people instead of one, because if I hire one person, they're going to be working 70 hours a week for me. And then I just become the boss I hated when I quit. Exactly. So is it, I don't want to do that. So I, so we, we capped our work weeks at 35 hours. Nice. Um, we, 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 we actually believe in 168 hour grid. Like there's always meetings and stuff, but right. we just tell them I, my editor works at night and my chief of staff and my retention people, they work in the, in the daytime. They just work whenever they want to. I don't care. Just, it doesn't matter to me. Right. And if you don't build it that way, it's crazy. And you said something that everyone needs to grab on because of Amy Porterfield saying it, I love you, Amy Porterfield. I have so much <laughs> respect for you, but if Amy Porterfield saying it, you better listen, um, is to keep it simple. That's, that's what allows yes. you to make choices. Uh, Brooke Castillo was on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. Love her. Yep. And she said, uh, she actually kind of came through our program and started her membership and did all these things. But she said something that blew my mind. And I can't believe I've never thought about this. But she said, I asked her a question like that. Like, why'd you not do this? Why'd you not do a fill? Why'd you not do whatever? And she said, it was not, it's why do you not do annual plans? Is what I asked her. And she said, Shane, I'll leave money on the table to keep it simple and fun. And I thought, Oh, that is so Brooke. That is so Brooke Brooke Castillo. It is so true. I genuinely want a simple business. I do. Mm. And, and Brooke's a great example of 20 million plus business owner, and she does keep it simple. Yep. So I, I love that that is a theme here. I'm going to get a shirt and I'm, I'll just give her credit for about a couple of years and I'll just keep it for me. But that's what <laughs> Perfect. I, all right. So there's another question I had for you. And then I've got a couple questions here before we wrap up. Um, I, I did open the, uh, the floor and ask our community like, Hey, I'm talking to Amy Porterfield today. Y'all want to ask her a question. So I got a couple of good questions from them, but I was reading your story, um, just catching back up with everything that you do uh, to prepare for this. And I saw that you struggled with a lot of self-doubt, especially in the yes. beginning of your journey after you left Tony Robbins, after you were doing these things. Um, I think this goes back to what we were talking about with even your new podcast. These things like body image and doubt and past trauma and all this sneak into our entrepreneurial journey and kind of get us stuck in the muck and mire. And, and that's why we plateau, right? Mm-hmm. So what do you, what did you do about that in the beginning? And like, what I've found the more successful we get is the more self-doubt creeps in because right? I got to keep going to a next level. And it's just yeah. so weird. You don't know what's going on and you just get confused again. So tell me about self-doubt a little bit in your journey. How'd you get past that? And maybe even now you're moving into Nashville, new people, new things yeah. like did they, is that creeping back in and oh, how yeah. are you managing that? Oh yeah. So the self-doubt really started when I left corporate. So because I work for Tony Robbins coming out from, behind the stage, essentially, I literally was behind the stage helping coming out from behind the stage and putting myself on video and putting myself out there was terrifying. And more so than just being scary, I kept thinking, who am I to be doing this? Because Mm. in my head, I'm thinking, I'm no Tony Robbins. And then I started to think, well, what is Tony going to think when I start making videos? And what are my coworkers going to think when they see me talking about this stuff? They're going to think I'm an idiot. And then my husband said, hey, babe, I love you, but Tony Robbins is not worried about what you're doing. Neither are your coworkers. (laughs) That's a great comment. Yeah. I'm like, (laughs) leave it to our spouses. You know what I mean? Right? You got to love them. (laughs) So I started to realize no one's really caring except me. Like, what? 
the, the fear I had and the imposter syndrome I faced, that was all in my head for sure. And so I struggled with it for a very long time, but the number one thing I did as I got into a community, in this case, I got into a mastermind of other entrepreneurial wom- women who I could talk to about my fears and about my struggles, see that I wasn't alone and then get advice when needed. So community became a very, very important thing for me very early on in my entrepreneurial journey. And now, and this has been about three years now, I work with a coach every mm. single week. She actually is, her name's Corinne Crabtree and she's um, studied through, she's actually Brooke Castillo's top coach, just for the record, and give her a shout out. And she, uh, we work, uh, every single week together, uh, uh, really about mindset. And so I needed to make sure I had someone to check in with and could kind of like put me on the straight and narrow when I went into some crazy imposter syndrome places in my head. So this is something I still struggle with. The The great thing is I take it seriously. I do the work. I show up and I face my fears. And so when it does come up, I can squash it quickly versus years ago, it would last for for a very long time and I would be uh, paralyzed because of it. Now it doesn't stop me in my tracks. Yeah, it just kind of slows you down for a minute, and then you pull out, and you, yeah. and you just keep on going. Hey, listen, me and Jocelyn, we're going um, out to a mindset workshop next week. I mean, we we, we for it. The, there's a there's an amazing song I listen to that I cannot remember who sings it or what the name of it. I just love the song, and uh, in it, the chorus just keeps over and over saying, "The work is never done." And like that always reminds me like, no, you don't arrive, people. You just show up at some next b- bus station and then you got to get back <laughs> on the Greyhound and you got to go down the road again. So you can't just stay at the bus station. Right. And it yeah. just never ends like the, the mindset issues that kind of creep up to like hold us back level after level after level. And if you so don't true. do the work, that's when you get stuck. Cause you it's think so you got true. It. I got all this. I got, I got to share with you about your question about being here in Nashville. I, I hate to, I hate to share this stuff because as a guide, as a leader, I never want to seem weak. My students look at me to, to help them move forward. And so I get very insecure of sharing my insecurities because of that. But I know that's not true. They want someone who's real and honest and open with them and has flaws because no one's perfect. So with that, I got to Nashville and for the last few weeks, I'm I'm very new here. I'm thinking, wait, I'm off my game. I'm not doing enough. I don't have things dialed in. Like you saw me scramble to even try to get this video up and running because everything's in boxes and it's just a mess over here. So I feel like I'm not doing a good job. I'm not relevant right now. I'm not showing up as much as I need to in my business. All this stuff comes flooding in. And then I took a minute and I journal every morning. I have to for my mental health. I hate journaling. I do it anyway. And I wrote down, okay, so I've got a brand new podcast out. We hit our biggest goal at the end of 2021. So the business is health or end of 20, the business is healthy. Um, and I'm working with book agents and publishers for my first book. My team is happy. Everyone set their goals. Like I, I did a flood list of everything that's working. And then I'm like, all right, Amy, and let's move on. Like, this is ridiculous Mm -hmm. what you're thinking. So I still go there, but then I do the work, like you said, to say, is this true or is this just fear? And it typically is just fear. I I took my son one day, had a, he he loves spaghetti and he loves this one shirt that says free Wi-Fi. And he thinks it's the, he thinks because it's, it's written in a way it's like free him from jail. And he just (laughs) thinks that's the funniest thing ever. So he got spaghetti on it one day and he was wearing it right before school. Well, back when we had school and uh, because we don't have school yet. Right. And, and he said, Oh, I got a stain on this man. Everybody's going to make fun of me. And I said, no, they're not. I said, nobody's even going to notice. And I said, and he goes, why? And he goes, like I got said, because they're worried about the spaghetti stain on their shirt, son. Nobody uh. cares. You love the shirt, wear the shirt. Nobody's going to notice it. All you got to do is just get past it and go do what you got to do anyway. That, and that, so that always true. falls up, you know, that spaghetti, nobody cares about your spaghetti stain. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's All a right. good slogan right there. That's right. So I got, so let me, let me bring in just a real quick, I know you got to run and I want to be respectful of your time, but I did have a great question uh, from Jennifer from the flip lifestyle community. And she said, um, you know, if, if Amy, if you were starting from scratch, which you kind of are in a new city, but like yeah. if you were starting from scratch in your business, knowing what you know now, like you just refocused your business on certain things, but that's kind of doing what you, you're doing. That's not doing what you did. So like, what would you did? What would you have done in the past if you were just starting now knowing everything that you know, if you were just someone who was getting online? 
I love this question and I'm very, very clear of what I would do. Number one, from day one, I would start creating content on a consistent basis. So that means I would podcast, blog, or do a video show every week. I'd choose one every week, rain or shine. We are partial, you and I, to podcasting, but whatever floats Mm -hmm. your boat, but do one every week, no matter what. Number two, I would list build. I would start growing my list from day one. I waited two full years and my first launch was a huge bust because I did not nurture an email list. So I would make content creation and list building how I do business from day one. And if if you're in day 365, you've been at it for a while, start now. Now is the time. Weekly content, grow your list, get serious about growing your list. I teach my students that list building should be part of your business, how you do business, not something you do and then hope that you never have to go back to it because Mm -hmm. it's not fun, sexy all the time. It is essential. The energy of your business is directly tied to the strength of your email list. It is very important you grow your email list. So that those are the two things I would do and I did not do and I struggled because of it if I was just starting from scratch. Man, I got my hands up. I'm saying hallelujah <laughs> and amen in the back of my head because that's what we do here in the South. You'll pick that up after about a year or two down here uh, in Nashville. All right, Amy, listen, I'm going to let you go because you've been so generous with your time and man, you are showing up and you're showing out and Thank you're doing you. so many things to help people out there. It was delightful uh, to talk to you today on the podcast and just thank you for being here. I'm so excited that I got the chance to spend some time with you. So thanks again. All right, guys, that wraps up my conversation with Amy Porterfield. There was so much in that podcast. You better rewind it, listen a couple times, take some notes because there is so much information in there about how to be a successful online entrepreneur, how to be a successful membership entrepreneur and go out and launch and build a million dollar membership. That might've been one of the most valuable podcasts that I've ever had the pleasure to be a part of. If you would like to find your own success path in the membership game, if you'd like to become a successful online business owner, if you want to go out there and become an entrepreneur who puts family first, finds work-life balance, and is able to leave their old life behind, we would love to help you inside of our Flipped Lifestyle community. The Flipped Lifestyle community is packed with information. We've got a training program called the Flipped Lifestyle Blueprint, where we will teach you exactly how to start, build, and launch your own membership site in 90 days or less. Inside the community, you'll be able to connect with hundreds of family-focused entrepreneurs around the world to find that community, to find that accountability that you need that Amy talked about today so that you can get your membership site off the ground. And of course, me and my team will be there to serve you all along the way in monthly Q&As and inside of our Flipped Lifestyle community forums. All you have to do to get started right now is go to flippedlifestyle.com slash free. That's F-L-I-P-P. ED lifestyle.com slash free. You can learn all about the program. You can learn how you can start and get involved and you can learn how we can help you build a better future for your family. That's flipped lifestyle.com slash free. Cannot wait to see you inside today. All right, y'all. That's all the time that we have for this week's podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and download a few of these podcasts right on your phone so you can take them with you anywhere you go. If you're just starting out in online business, if you're just starting out in the membership space, head over to flippedlifestyle.com or look up the Flipped Lifestyle podcast over on Apple or Spotify too. That's my other podcast. Each week, I interview a real member of the Flipped Lifestyle community, and I help them take their online business to the next level, and I let you listen in so you can learn how to do the same. Make sure you subscribe to the Flipped Lifestyle podcast too, and if you haven't done so yet, go leave us a review on your podcast player of choice. Don't forget, y'all, all you need is 100 people to pay you $50 a month to make $60,000 a year. Heck, if you had 1,000 paying 83, you could create a million-dollar membership of your own. We've seen it happen for us. We've seen it happen for hundreds of people inside the Flip Flop Star community, and we know that it could happen for you and your family too. I'll see you right here on the next Membership Masters podcast. Until then, take action, be consistent, be prolific, be relentless and do whatever it takes to flip your life. We'll see you then.